Joining us now from Rome he is Jonathan Liedel, senior editor at the National Catholic Register. Uh, great to see you, Jonathan. As we heard from Colin, uh, Bishop Strickland did give an interview shortly after his removal. What else did he say? Well, Tracy, when Bishop Strickland was asked why he uh, believes he was removed from office, he didn't mince words. He says that he has threatened some of the powers that be with the truth of the gospel. Bishop Strickland went on to say that he believes right now within the church there is a powerful movement to change teaching and practice in ways that are incompatible with Catholic truth. And he said that given his outspokenness on these issues, for people who have that agenda, he said, quote, I'm a problem. Now, Bishop, Strick Bishop Strickland did not uh, say that Pope Francis is part of this push to change church teaching, but he did say that these forces have an influence upon the pope and that that went into the decision to remove him from office. However, at the same time, Bishop Strickland was very clear that he accepts the pope's decision to remove him from office, that Pope Francis has the authority to do that. And he also appealed to Catholics, especially those who might be upset by his removal, urging them to first and foremost pray for Pope Francis and to pray for the Church, and also to stay united to the Church, which is the mystical body of Christ. Now, Jonathan, we know the Vatican didn't give any formal reason for why Bishop Strickland was remo removed, that is. Uh, we know that during the apostolic visitation in June, in addition to questions about Bishop Strickland's social media use, um, some concerns were raised about his running the diocese. What more can you tell us about that? Yeah, the, the media reports that surfaced at that time actually indicated that a main line of questioning of that apostolic visitation was on questions of governance in the Diocese of Tyler. For instance, concerns have been raised about significant turnover of diocesan staff, also the management of the lo local uh, diocesan Catholic school. Uh, a, a somewhat controversial former religious sister who was expelled from religious life in France by Pope Francis was actually given a teaching job at that school. There were also concerns about a planned Catholic community called Veritatis Splendor uh, that fell into significant controversy uh, related to financing and also the personal conduct of its members. Uh, but at the same time, there are some of those concerns. There have also been a number of positive signs in the Diocese of Tyler under Bishop Strickland's tenure tenure, and he, in fact, alluded to some of those again in this recent interview he gave. Curious, what has been the reaction uh, so far to Bishop Strickland's removal? Well, Tracy, as you can imagine, Bishop Strickland is certainly a polarizing figure, so the reactions have been very polarized as well. Uh, some Catholics have celebrated and praised Pope Francis's decision to remove Bishop Strickland. Uh, they've cited his uh, criticisms of the pope on social media, saying that he was a threat to church unity. On the other hand, uh, others have criticized this as an abuse of papal power. In fact, uh, Cardinal Gerhard Mueller, the former prefect of the, the Vatican's uh, Office for Doctrine and Faith, he said that this was an abuse of the divine right of the episcopate, so to remove a bishop from his local church without citing a canonical crime. Jonathan, before I let you go, um, now that he is no longer the shepherd of the Diocese of Tyler, do we know what he's going to do? Well, uh, you're right, Bishop Strickland. He's not the shepherd. He remains a bishop, though, so sort of like a shepherd without a flock. Uh, he acknowledged this. He said there are a lot of unanswered questions and a lot of open time on his calendar. All right, we're going to leave right there. Jonathan, great to be with you. We appreciate your insights.